Hello, everyone. I'm Keith Armour. I'm the Education and Homework Support Manager down here at the main library in the Adult Learning Center. Today, we're going to um, look at a couple of things that are happening around the library, and then we're going to dive right into Ancestry.com, the library edition. Now, typically what happens, um, you would have to be in the library to use this edition of Ancestry.com. Um, but the wonderful people at Ancestry.com allowed all of you uh, until the end of this year, the end of 2020, to have access to this great resource right in the comfort of your own home. So we're going to take a look at that, and we're going to look at a couple of other things that are happening in the library. All right, so let's just go ahead and dive right in. All right, everyone should be seeing uh, the Cincinnati library.org, our website. We're going to click right down here to transforming our youth services to match transformed lives. Um, all of our lives have been transformed this year of 2020. And our wonderful uh, lifelong learning manager, Maggie Kilman, um, put this article all together. Um, so you'll hopefully fill out a survey for us. But all of our virtual programs, there's some direct links to our book clubs and our story times and our virtual film club, even essential life skills. Um, we did a lot of in-person programming as well. Our very popular drive-in story times is just a click away there. And then we created a lot of take and makes where um, all of these essential parts of the program go into a bag and then the branches offer them up and then you can take them uh, and then take them back home and uh, create them and make them. And we're continuing to do that uh, this winter and fall, so this fall and winter season. We have our meal box program and of course our homework help. Um, live virtual homework help is available seven days a week from two in the afternoon until 11 at night. And there's a lot of more a lot more information there on homework help now that's available all the time that would help um, students and of course parents or caregivers that are having to help with homework. So check out this article, but definitely fill out this survey. The survey is not very long. Um, it should take you a few minutes to fill it out, but it's going to help us guide our programs and our services going forward, um, especially through these winter months. And we love to hear from our patrons and our customers all the time. So please make sure that you take some time, fill, fill this out and let us know about um, the programming that we could provide and the services that we could continue to provide and do a little bit more of possibly in the coming months. Um, I will point out right here, this second article right here is our frozen meals available at branches thanks to the new great partnership with La Soup. And um, we're gonna go right here. This is of course, Natalie Fields, who is the manager of Deer Park. And they tried it out at Deer Park. And it talks about how um, the program works and the wonderful success that they had at Deer Park. But we're gonna click right up here at our meals page. And here's frozen meals for all ages. And it's Mondays from three to six. And La Soup will provide um, individual or family size frozen meals for all ages, while, of course, supplies last. And that's one meal per person. And youth do not have to be present. And those are at Deer Park, Delhi Township, Green Hills, Miami Township, and Mount Washington. And I mentioned this just a second ago, um, but our meal box program, which is seven meals and seven snacks um, for children. And you can find out who is eligible for those meal boxes. And that's at all of those branches. And that's Mondays um, from 3 to 5 as well. We've been doing that for many, many weeks. Um, I know the whole month of September and then October already because it's November now. So today we are going to go to back to our main page. And we're going to go under services because we are going to, I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to get to the Ancestry Library Edition. Um, but we're going to go to Genealogy and Local History. And you can make an appointment. And of course, there's some other categories here that you could check out, Cincinnati History, African-American History, and the Special Collections. 
And then um, scrolling down, you can see the newspaper 100 years ago. You can make an appointment, fill that out here. Our wonderful panorama that's there, you can visit in person. Of course, you can visit the digital exhibit right here, just a click away. Um, we are gonna go to the digital library next week for Lunch and Learn. And these are some other resources that you might wanna check out. But I'm gonna click the arrow again. These are some more. Remember this inside post. There's searchable online archives. And then move here. We're gonna find the last one right here is Ancestry, the library edition. Now, when I would click that, um, since I'm in the library, it automatically comes to this page. But if you're outside the library, what's going to happen is it will ask you to put in your library card, and then you have to select the libraries. Of course, select Cincinnati and Hamilton County Public Library. Now, usually Ancestry Library Edition is available only in person, in the library. But the wonderful folks at um, Ancestry Library Edition um, have, have allowed this resource to be used at home. So all you need to do is have your library card in your pen. Now that is going to be accessible to you all the way until the end of this year, of the end of 2020. So you have a lot of time to use this great resource and you don't even have to come into our branches, even though we're open um, and you can come in, but um, this is a great resource you can check out. Right here on the front page, there, yeah, everybody wants to click begin searching right away. I'm not going to go there right, right now. Um, search the census and then search now. Uh, search vital, search military, and then search immigration is here as well. Here is the U.S. Census records here. And then there's some quick links as well down here. Now, up here on the top black bar that's right up here, you've got home, search, message boards, learning center, charts and forms, and new collections. We're going to click on new collections first. And I do want to um, tell you that there's a lot of things that um, is in the library edition. Um, well, let me reverse that. There's a lot of things in Ancestry.com that you pay for that is not accessible through the library edition, such as collaborate, such as publish and shop and hire an expert and uh, the, uh, the DNA, the Ancestry DNA um, connection is not in the library edition. Neither is the One World Tree or Family Tree where you can just type it in. But I'm gonna give you some suggestions on how to get, um, how to use some things online to um, access all that. Um, here's their card catalog and you see all of the information that's over here and the census and the other uh, data points that they have so you can filter by uh, days or filter by dates. And then there's 11. There's actually, um, there are a lot. There's 10,000 searches here, 10,000 results that are here, um, just in here. And they're very, very specific. Um, and you can just click it and it even tells you over here um, when they've been updated or they're brand new to the site as well. So that's new collections. I have not really looked into new collections yet. Um, so check it out and let me know. Let me know what you think about new collections. Charts and forms, the library edition, they give you these forms that you can just print out. And so here's your answer, um, your, your chart, your family tree chart. You can fill in your, your information here and your parents here and then their grand, their parents and your grandparents, your great grandparents. And I found this a very useful tool to have that I could just go ahead and type in um, or write down what I found as I did my searching. There's a research ca calendar, uh, their correspondence record, uh, research extract. Um, I thought this was very helpful. It's a family group sheet. I'll click on that and bring it up. And of course I can make this bigger and I can print and I can save this as well. And here I am with all the information here and I can really just start digging down and getting more information and writing it down. Um, so even though you don't have access to the family tree part of um, ancestry.com um, through the library edition, 
you do have these resources that I think are very helpful and you can just download the form and print it out or just keep it on your computer. Um, here are the census forms. Now yeah, I'm going to click on this. Now the since the first U.S. census was actually taken um, place in 1790 and the last one that we have access to is the 1940 and that's to protect people that are still alive. So we want, um, you can look at the form has changed over a period of time, and then there's more questions that have been added as well. So at the very beginning, there's gonna be some very basic questions that are asked. There are some census forms from the UK and from Canada, and then they'll give you some, a little five minute uh, find on, on sending, view, um, sending documents. You can even view the video there as well. So that is census, that's the charts and forms, and that's where you'll see the census forms. That's just the blank form. It's not the actual form that um, is filled out. I'll show you that in just one moment. Um, Learning Center, we're gonna go to in just a second board. Let's go to message boards. The message boards, you will not in the library edition be able to write any messages on the message board. However, you have access to over 200,000 of these message boards and you can read all 25 million posts um, and they've broken them down by category and these are the top categories but there are of course many many more and you can look very specifically as well too so the message boards are very helpful let's go over a learning center and the Learning Center has two different areas. They have research aids and they have maps. Um, let's go ahead and click on maps first. Now, if by chance you click on, let's say you click on Ohio and nothing pops up, like right now we see the map of Ohio. Um, if it doesn't pop up, just double check that you have unblocked and allow pop-ups on your computer. It's really important to know um, not only the, the city your parents were born in, but what was the county that they were born in? And you'll notice that when we do a search in just a few minutes, um, why that comes in handy. So sometimes you might say, oh, they were in Maysville, Marysville. Well, what county is that? Oh, that's Union County. So that helps out. And then there's some other information here too. So you can click on, and then you would leave and go to the wiki. So we're not actually going to go to the wiki, okay? But there's a lot of different information here that we'll, you will find very helpful. But knowing um, the county that your parents or your grandparents um, were born in or lived in will be really, really helpful, okay? So we're going to go to research aids, and you'll notice that they've broken it down into different ways, getting started, the census, um, beyond the basics, and then these down here as well. Okay, ethnic and military and immigration. And they'll give you some tips on how to find that piece of information. Now, right here, we're gonna to go to Ancestry Anne's top 10 search tips. And of course, I can make it bigger. I can print these out. I could also save these. Now, some of these tips um, are really directed for someone who's paying for Ancestry.com. Um, because she, the very first one is that you can add information and you can't really add a lot of information on the library edition. However, I was able to find a lot of information about my grandparents, my great-grandparents, and my great-great-grandparents as well. Um, but the, this is some really helpful tips on how to use the service. And then creating timelines that produce answers. And then right here, it's the uh, DNA uh, 101. Of course, that's not going to be really helpful for you with the library edition. Um, the census information is really helpful if I go. These are the 10 census tips. And it's gonna show me um, the focus on unusual names, first names only, and wild cards, and how to look and search for that information as well. And it tells you a little breakdown of how the census, how you're going to look at that information on the census. And then this is 10 census questions that lead to more answers. And, you know, you think, oh, I'm just going to look at this. Well, you can actually find out more answers by really digging deep 
into uh, each census question and trying to find out more information. So I thought the Learning Center here was very, very helpful uh, when I was looking for my information. And then I thought the maps were extremely important as well, because I was able to locate where my grandparents were born. And one set was born in Tennessee, and I was able to find that information and find the county that they lived in as well. That would help refine my search. All right. Now, we're going to go ahead and do a search. I'm going to go over here to search and look at the categories, all categories, census and voting uh, lists, birth, uh, marriage and death, military, immigration, travel and card catalog. We're just going to say all categories. And I'm not going to put in my information. I will put in a famous Cincinnatian who was born right here. Actually, not that far, less than a mile away from the Public Library of Cincinnati and Hamilton County. Now, that's William Howard Taft. Of course, he was the president, and he also was the chief justice as well for the Supreme Court. Uh, but he was born right here in Cincinnati. Now, this right here, exact, um, I found this really interesting because one of my great grandfathers, he his name changed um, several times, and it was depending on who the census worker was and how they wrote it down. Um, so if you want to, you could say exact, or you could say sounds like or similar or initials, and that kind of might help things out, okay? We're not gonna say exact, the same thing you could do with last name as well. Now, I'm going to type in, I know he was born in Cincinnati, and look what comes up. Everything comes up, there's Cincinnati, Hamilton County, Ohio, USA. So I'm going to click on that. And I actually knew that he was born in 1857, not off my top of my head, I looked it up. Um, but then I could also look at exact here. And if I click on this, I could add a year or subtract a year. I could add two years or subtract two years or five years or 10 years as well. So I'm going to look for, I'm going to just leave it open. Now I could show more options here. I could put in more information here. I could even do keyword. A lot of times it helps if you at least put gender in. And then I'm going to hit search. Now before I hit search, I can also explore by location and look these all the US states and then all the continents as well. Well, not all of the continents, but the major continents are here. And of course, all the special collections here on the right-hand side, okay? So I'm gonna hit search, and we're gonna find William Howard Taft. Now, the first thing we're gonna look for, because he was born in 1857, let's look right here, because this is um, the US Census in 1870. So if I put my mouse right over here, a window pops up, and I can view the image, but I can see that he was 12 years old. That's when he was born. That was the dwelling number. He was in school. There's his father, there's his mother. And those are not necessarily brothers and sisters, but those were all the people that were in his household. So if I view the image, I'm gonna click right here. And here's the actual census. Now, remember, I'm looking for William Howard Taft. Well, there's William Howard Taft. You're wondering, well, why is it here in yellow? Well, because he was, he was only 12, so he wasn't the head of the household. You'll notice that his father, right up here, Alfonso, he was the head of the household. So he was at the top, and then you have age, and then you have male or female, and then you have the race, and then the occupation. Okay, so William was at school. That was his occupation at the time. And then he was born in Ohio, and that's the information that's there, okay? But these are all the different people that lived in his house. So if I, here's a servant. So these three people right here were all servants in the William Howard Taft house. Well, in the Alfonso Taft house, okay? And you'll see that Charles P., um, William's older brother, was actually a lawyer at the time. Okay, So that's information. I could save that up here, 
or of course I could uh, print it out uh, after I save the document as well. Okay. Now let's go ahead and go back and let's go to the, no, we wouldn't, we could probably find his information here because look at how it's matching up fairly well. So we could look at the 1960. And remember, he was only two years old at that time. Um, but let's go ahead and look at the 1980 census. And here it's going to tell me a little bit more. He's 22. He's living at this house. He's single. And his occupation um, is a lawyer at this time. Oh, no, I think his, his father was a lawyer at that time. Okay. Now, if I fast forward a little bit and go down to the 1910 census, let's go to this one right here. And here he is, 52, occupation U.S. president. And then these are the members of his household. So when I click on this one, view image here, you're going to notice that his name is in yellow. Let me get it. And he's at the top of the page. And the reason he's at the top of the page is that he is the head of that household. If I go over, you'll notice at the very top here, there's a lot more information because they were asking more and more information at each U.S. census. So let's look right here. Right here is occupation, U.S. president, <laughs> um, and he's self-employed. He's the wage earner, and he can read, he can write, and attended school. He's not attending school at that point in his life, so they are putting no there. And then they have some other information as well. So then you have the members of the household, and then they also have who else was living there. So some servants were living with them as well at the same time. Once again, I could save that, um, and I would have that information there for myself. Um, I was amazed at how much information I was able to find. I saw um, my grandfather's draft cards and got to see their printing um, and how they, they wrote. Um, I got to learn a lot more about my grandparents and how they um, misspelled their, their, my great-grandparents' name several different times. Um, but it was really fun to find this information. So what you want to do is when you're, you're going here, when you go to Ancestry, the library edition, I really highly recommend you go to the Learning Center first, read some of these tips here, and then go back, do your search in the all category area. And as you're putting names in, you can look at if it's exact or not, and you can um, you can really fine tune your research. I was really surprised at how many times year on year, or census on census, uh, one grandfather's name or one great great grandfather's name changed um, just a little bit, just by a letter or so. Um, so definitely check out this. Now, I'm going to go back to the library website because I want to show you a different way to get here. You can go to the main page, go to Research Databases, and you can click right over here and uh, sort databases A through Z. Click there. And it's all in alphabetical order. And there is Ancestry, the library edition. And remember, it is free all the way until the end of this year, 2020. Um, I do want to point out a couple more things. Let's go to the events calendar and let's look and see what's happening uh, this coming Saturday. We've got um, our outdoor event. We are going to have a plant swap down right down here at the main library. Um, you can bring a beautiful pest-free plant or two or three, who's counting, they say, to trade. Uh, and you can have more plants for your inside world that we are um, so needing these days. Um, that time is this Saturday, the 14th, from 10 until 12. Let's check out something else that's going on. Our virtual event, Life 101 Self-Care on a Budget, um, that is taking place this Saturday. It's a virtual event. 
Um, you can learn more information about that from the Adult Learning Center. And then we have outdoor gaming at Norwood. You've got an adult make and take craft um, that's happening at Green Township. That's on Sunday, so you take it and then you go home and you make it. So that's for adults as well. Uh, you've got some junior explorer kitchen science um, and some more virtual programs here. So make sure you check those out. Um, thank you very much. And I'm gonna click out and see what else we have to, what else I need to tell you. All right, that's Ancestry.com, the library edition, which is, of course, just with your library card, you have access to that at home um, until the end of this year, 2020. And even though um, a lot of us are not gathering with our families at Thanksgiving, um, let's learn a little bit more about um, the wonderful people that um, came before us and our families through Ancestry.com. And it's totally free just with your library card. Um, we want to also thank the wonderful people at La Soup um, that are providing um, free meals for individuals and families on Mondays from 3 to 6 at Del High, uh, Deer Park, Green Hills, Miami, Miami Township, and Mount Washington. And of course, all of our wonderful um, meal service for children that is all uh, at all of those other locations that um, families can pick up meals for their children, um, three to six, uh, every Monday at those locations. You can check that out on our website. Um, this Saturday, a uh, plant swap that's happening right down here at the main library, check that out. And then of course, our virtual class that I mentioned earlier, the self-care on a budget, that is um, a virtual class that's taking place this Saturday as well. And then um, if you have time and the weather's beautiful, which it's supposed to be, uh, at Next Monday at St. Bernard Fall Reeds. You can put those together on the, on the outside. Um, next week, we are going to dive into our digital library. Um, we have such a huge collection of rare materials, photos, posters, all sorts of things. And um, once again, just a click away, you can look at this wonderful collection. So thank you very much for joining me for today's Lunch and Learn, and I'll see you next week.